Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we're going to be taking part 5 in this penultimate war of season 23 as we make our way towards the final rank 3 apocalypse boss. Yes, you heard me right. It's a rank 3 big boy. So in the meantime, I'm going to be walking you through the encounters I come up against and we're going to see, can I make it all the way without any deaths? So stay tuned. And let's go. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. And I know we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, to my shadow. So, first up, coming up right now, I'm going to be using this opportunity to ramp up. My G99 against a pretty easy and straightforward fight against Crit Monkey. So yeah, feel free to knock him down as well. Never fear. As long as you're able to bait and evade this SP1, you know, just knock him down as much as you want. In fact, uh, yeah, if you're using G99, that's what you want to do whenever you start any fight. Knock him down for at least five to six times to give yourself that combo shield so just in case you mess up it's not going to be too much of an issue Away, melodies we haven't played no i don't want no rest echoing around these walls fighting to create a song i don't want to miss a beat So what's coming up next is a really easy fight on paper and uh, if you're adequately prepared it should also be really easy but I went into this fight with the misconception or the assumption that this was also going to be a face roll because usually I face a lot of Nick Furies on this ebb and flow heavy and heavy hitter node so here you're going to see where I mess up big time I wasn't yeah never faced daredevil to be honest with you much i think this is the first time i'm facing him in any war for that matter especially on part five so kudos to my opponents um they must have known that i would have come in with the wrong assumptions and judge this book by its cover i didn't really read anything about daredevil i assumed that he was going to be a really straightforward fight but yeah so i wasn't that I wasn't aware of the 15 hits on his uh, combo meter and more than 15 hits thingamajig but yeah so that's the thing that screwed me over here but uh, as you can see I'm quite panicky at this moment I'm being trapped in the corner but I'm telling myself <laughs> I'd better not die because if I do my teammates my alliance mates are gonna definitely they're gonna let me have it and they're not gonna let me <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna be able to lift this down at all so I'm trying my best to survive over here, I'm trying my best to salvage the situation. So what I'm doing right now is, yeah, I just realized that even though he's able, right, um, as long as his, he's under 15 hits, even though he's able to shrug off all those um, debuffs, shrug off the stun, but there's a slight delay of 0.5 seconds. So instead of going in for the normal in this case, um, heavies, because you want to take advantage of the ebb and flow heavy. Just do normal attacks if you manage to stun him when he's below 15 in terms of his combo meter. So that should do the trick. Really straightforward fight. It might last a bit longer, but as you can see, in no time at all, down he goes. 
So after surviving that uh, fight that was unnecessarily hard, it's now time to heal up. And man oh man, man those items. I try my best every war to conserve items as much as I can. If I can do it itemless, I try my best to do so as well. But yeah, couldn't be helped. I took way too much damage, had to heal up before this Doctor Doom fight. So yeah, in terms of this Doctor Doom fight, nothing special here, just bread and butter, parry heavy, parry heavy, re-parry heavy, do whatever you want to do. Keep on knocking him down, build your SP tree, lay on that meaty SP tree with big damage, as well as all those critical bleeds, or enhanced shrapnel bleeds, or whatever it's called. And yeah, down he goes, easy peasy. Yeah, I do get clipped over there by that uh, last hit of his SP too, because I didn't time it correctly, but um, yep. Yeah. Not an issue at all. In fact, you don't even need to push yourself to an SP3, just a meaty SP2. Even though he is armor break immune, he, it still hurts a lot. Just like the... So up next, we have a Void on Ebb and Flow Intercept. So what I do at the start is I rack him up by battering away to lock in those combo shields. Which you'll see is gonna come in real handy for me later on because I do get clipped at one point and thank goodness for this because it helps preserve my combo as well as getting in all those intercepts because um, yep, that allows you to do more damage but it isn't really necessary if you are starting this fight with a ramped up G99 Her D-Gen and additional damage with over 100 hits would actually make in a way, the fury from uh, intercepting him, not really necessary. So all you need to do is here is here, yeah, because I'm running suicides as you can see, so that's why I brought G99 for this fight, to mitigate that issue of too much passive damage being dealt to me because of suicides. So anyways, I've built up to my SP3 right now. I'm gonna chop him down a little bit more. This is where I lock it in with the final SP3 so I can transfer my meter over to the next fight. So, straightforward fight as well. Nothing too much. Alright, so in this next Ab and Flow Intercept fight, we're going up against Nova. So, because he's metal, I decide to bring the best counter, which is Mags. So in this fight, you're gonna see he's quite cheeky in that, um, yeah, he's quite reluctant to throw that follow-up light attack after that initial medium. So this prevents me from landing all those re-parries which I need to proc all that um, prouts on him. So what I can say is, yeah, he's giving me a lot of issues because, I won't say a lot of issues, but he's really misbehaving here. He just doesn't want to seem to throw those follow-up lights so I can re-parry, but that's why I get clipped sometimes because I'm expecting him to allow himself to get re-parried and I'm just standing there waiting for an opening to land my heavy. And here, I've learned my lesson, I just go in for normal attacks and of course looking out for any openings I get for the heavy trying to land some so I finally did, did manage to land another heavy there so this is where I store it up build up try to build up more prowess double it some more I am gearing up to throw my SP3 right about after of course I got clipped by that SP1 there right about now right pushing him to below one meter and this should be it yep so this damage should do it if the direct damage from SP3 doesn't kill them at this stage. Damage from bleed certainly would do the job. So 
really really straightforward fight as well and up next we're going up against thing and for this fight we're gonna be bringing in our ramped up guillotine 99 because yeah i'm not concerned of whether or not he procs an armor break on me or whether or not he has all those rock stacks or protection active as long as i'm above 100 hits he's gonna melt like nobody's business so this whole fight went according to plan i kept him or managed his rock stacks ever so well however i messed up at the last part because at the very end as you'll see i did not end the fight with an l3 so which means i wasn't able to carry over my combo to the next fight but it didn't really matter that much because that was the end of me using G99 for this war. Because what was coming up next is the R3 APOC boss. I do believe I think I took another mini boss before fighting R3 APOC. But yeah, G99, she had run a course and I would be relying on mags for the rest of this war. So I'll leave you to this. I'll check back in with you in the next fight. It's gonna be quite long anyway this fight. <laughs> Alright, so we've arrived at our main attraction, which is this R3 Big Boy APOC. So I didn't manage to take any of those uh, mini bosses, especially that th the next thing mini boss on... Um, I think there was this uh, note that uh, you can't stun him unless you incinerate him. I forgot the name of that. But anyways, yeah, I didn't bring the right champions to take on that particular node. So not confident, not gonna do it let my alliance mate handle that so i requested reserve this r3 boss i boosted up here just to play it safe in my mind i was like thinking two no three three sp trees should do the trick to build up 18 force loop charges that should be able to take down this close to 500,000 hp boss so what i'm doing here i know what i'm using so basically try not to risk it if you are not comfortable or not really proficient at invading this sp1 don't do it if you're using guardian just tank it just perfect block all those beam hits and the bonus is this allows you to build up a lot of damage or no rather a lot of power at the same time push you very quickly to that sp3 so over here i believe we throw our first sp3 lock in those six guarantee six persistent or permanent charges all right so they're in the bank you rinse and repeat you can push apocalypse to an sp2 as well same thing perfect block all those energy balls or if you want, just try to bait out his SP1 as well. It's up to you because any one of those that you perfect block with Guardian, you're not going to be receiving any damage at all, actually. Because all perfect blocks reduce with Guardian as long as his armor is up, reduces all that damage to zero. So, yeah, you want to try to also, if you can, um, feather. Right, release your thumb while you're blocking that SP1 or SP2. Try to feather it, if you know what I mean, so that you can actually try to perfect block every single hit of those special attacks, those projectiles, for more power. So, 
sometimes I do get it, sometimes I don't. Um, but anyways, it's guaranteed that I always am able to perfect block two out of three energy attacks. And if you get to, if you perfect block the third one, it's even better because more power to you. <laughs> really, it's more power to you. You really build up more power, more quickly, more easily. So anyways, this fight is going according to plan. It's two SP trees in the bag already. I'm looking to lock in the third SP tree for 18 FFCs. All right, so patiently building myself to the final, final SP tree that I reckon should be enough to take him down. So I'm, I'm really, really comfortable right now. I'm feeling really confident at this point in time because look at my health close to 80% health left. I did mess up a few perfect blocks here and there, but they weren't too, how to say, they weren't too punishing, yep. So here I throw the third SP tree. After this, I'm gonna gear up to fire off the SP2 once it's ready. And for this one, as I was building up to my SP2, in my mind, I was already already envisioning apocalypse just melting ever so quickly with that meaty sp2 so here i just can't wait to get to it I'm trying my best speed it up as much as possible look for those openings go in again go in again all right all right reparries there all the reparries and here we go i throw it off Additional 51,772 attack by right. But look at that damage. Like, what? Was that it? Alright, you saw the arrows there. Guys, that was the reason why. I still had a concussion on me when I fired at SP2. As well as those concussions or that concussion interacting with his built up, those stacks of physical resistance that greatly reduced and gained that damage. So, just be aware. When you're about to draw that meaty SP2, make sure you stagger. All right, to use that term correctly, you stagger your hits, delay, space out your hits to let that concussion, at least most importantly, to let that concussion wear off so that you can convert all of your force field charges into that increased attack rating. So, anyways, I was panicking over here primarily because. When I fired off that SP2, my armor was consumed. So the thing is, I was trying to buy myself time as much as possible, as long as possible, before he fired off any special attack, waiting for my armor to reform so that I could perfect block once again. So anyways, over here, I was trying to beat the clock, racing against time, but didn't manage to succeed. I timed out. What a waste. In hindsight, if I had done four SP trees, Yep, that's right. If only I had done 4 SP trains, gotten to 24 FFCs, that would have done the trick. So anyways, over here, I purposely got hit with Magneto going in for the 2 shot, so I could push myself below 50% for courage. Now, who am I kidding? Okay, that was accidental. I didn't, me didn't mean to get clipped over there, but got the job done, so... Didn't get one shot, did it in 2 tries. What a waste. But anyways, guys, sharing this with you. So when you use Guardian next time, especially against bosses with a lot of health or any boss for that matter but especially against this apocalypse if you have concussion on you you want to play it safe build up to four sp trees you have enough time for that within five minutes to do so so anyways thank you so much for tuning in it's been quite some time since my last video upload and sorry to have kept you waiting guys anyways if you liked what you saw please do leave a like subscribe and I'll catch you for the next one. In the meantime, take care.